Thank you all for coming. My name is Kate Levy. Uh, I'm a senior theater major and the producer for this project. I'm really excited to finally share it with you. It's been in development for almost a year now, and we as a group have been rehearsing since the beginning of the semester. Um, I hope you're as excited as I am. This is uh, a silent performance, so I'd like everyone to take a moment to make sure that your phones are off. Uh, <laughs> uh, running time is about half an hour. There will be an optional uh, Q&A and talk back after uh, the performance. We'll give everyone a couple of minutes, let the dancers take a breath, and then we'll have a Q&A. Um, I'd like to give a special thanks to Dr. Luscom and all of the contributors to the Luscom Arts Endowment who helped make this project possible. So, thank you. I hope you enjoy.
start the Q&A now. I don't know <laughs> yeah, I feel like everyone feels like they need to be really quiet now because it was like all in silence and everything. But um, yeah, we are here to answer any questions you might have, any inquiries about anything. Yeah, I wanted to ask about your concept of not using music for dance. So yeah, you could talk about that and perhaps the creative process of putting together this yeah. without music. Absolutely. Um, first of all, actually, I wanted to introduce everyone. This is Sam Perbell. She's our costume designer. Evan Carlson is a lighting designer. Kate Manibi. Uh, Bree McCormick is our choreographer. Angie Verdant. Sam Soltis. Brenna Bradley. And Isabel Irwin. Um, Um, the, the concept of not use, using music was actually how this whole project began. When we started this, um, when, when I, that was the concept I came up with last June, and when we started this in January, that was our only starting point, was that we would have some sort of sculptural element, which ended up being um, a lot of fabric and costumes, um, lighting and dance, and we would get together at the beginning of the semester and figure out how to make a thing without music to bridge the worlds. Um, which turned out to be really difficult because all the opportunities, all the possibilities in the world can get a little confusing, you know? It could be anything. Um, so we met be between once and twice a week, um, every, almost every week starting in January. Um, we actually started in a very different place than body image. We had different themes, different technology. Um, and as we got to know each other and to grow and explore and to fight and make up, we, we ended up coming to this place. Um, and it was actually during a rehearsal one day, um, we were playing an improv game and one of the dancers put um, one of the other one's skirt over her face and pressed it through it and it looked like a mask. And I said, oh, Sam, what if we had masks? And, and that, that ended up leading us into this body image direction. But the lack of music, um, was, was really just a starting point because I had noticed, you know, you know, doing some dance in the past that a lot of times you tend to, tend to either go with the dance or go with the music, and, and music, as a lighting designer myself, could be somewhat of a safety net. So my thought was, what if I remove that safety net and just figured it out with people? Yeah. Uh, choreographically, we found out that not having music is also very challenging in that, um, Music is a, it's a very good way of chapterizing things. So it's different sections of music, different sounding music can chapterize and dance sort of naturally. And without that, without that, um, we had to sort of discover together how to um, distinguish the different sections of our dance and what we were trying to portray with each new series of phrase work with only the lights and only the lights isolating one dancer or several dancers or the color or the mood and not have to rely on counts or phrasing, um, which was another challenge because phrasing all had to be felt and they all had to know, especially with the unison, it's particularly challenging because they have to feel each other and know, and know what they're all doing at the same time. So. Can you tell us something about each of you? What your backgrounds are and your majors? Uh, I'm Samantha Corbell. I'm a fourth year uh, theater design student studying uh, costume design and hair and makeup. Uh, I'm Evan Carlson. I'm a second year theater design with an uh, emphasis in uh, lighting design as well as lighting design for dance. Um, I'm Kate Maybe. I'm a, I'm a senior, question mark here. <laughs> uh, we'll be graduating this summer, a uh, lighting design student. Um, I'm Drew McCormick. I am a BFA dance major. I will be graduating in under a month. And uh, I have a minor in business management. Oh, um, I'm Irji. I'm a sophomore BFA. Uh, um, I'm Samantha Soltis. I am a freshman dance major and exercise science major. I'm Brenna Bradley. I'm a junior BFA dance major. I'm Isabella Irwin. I am a fourth year dance major and my medical science major. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> when you talked about uh, your collaboration process when you started working together in January, did that include the dancers or did you spend time in meetings just as producer directors as a director for your team? 
Um, we, it was almost entirely with dancers. There were there were just a few times when we were in a tough place where you know the the two of us or the three or four of us would meet and talk things out for a while. Um, but for the most part, uh, the large part of our early rehearsals, about half of our early rehearsals, would be us just sitting in a circle in this room and and talking about what we were feeling about what happened in an, in an improv game or or where we thought we could go. <laughs> And I thought, oh. uh, no, actually, uh, most of them were, um, but because of the, the limitations in scheduling of the space, um, we did some rehearsals in our smaller theater in the Gilmore in the, in the York Arena, if you've ever been there, um, which was, was actually a kind of nice way to, to do it in an intimate space and then transfer some ideas over here. But for the most part, they were. Yeah. Um, and to uh, go. Uh, to connect with the doing it with the dancers from the beginning, we became this huge like family and group. We could feel each other, and that's what really helped this piece become what it is. We're able to. I'm able as the lighting designer. I have no cue. I have cues, but I don't take them on a specific spot. I always take them as I feel the dancers are ready and when I'm ready. And as the group, we kind of breathe together and move through the piece, and that's what really I thought really brought this piece to where it is now and how it ended up. I actually completely agree. Having um, everyone, the entire, the whole of the collaboration at every and all rehearsals was is really special and interesting and something I've never experienced before. Even in a collaborative project that I've done before, I have always rehearsed with my dancers separately and then we have come together with another rehearsal later on in the week. But every single rehearsal we've ever had, I've had uh, the lighting and you know the costume designer, so there was always there was never any miscommunication. I guess there was what they were watching the dancers do. Evan was seeing happening. Evie was seeing happening. Sam was seeing happening. Vice versa. It really gave everyone the opportunity. Um, during every rehearsal, to go, oh my goodness, what if we, what if that led to this, and and really helped the creative process. Yeah. Um, your use of fabric was very interesting. Yeah. When did that come into the rehearsal process, and how did it change the piece? Um, that came out. That came on in the beginning. We were originally going to have a more sculptural element, um, but that that went away in probably February and we knew we wanted a scenic element and the theater happened to have all of this oil um, so we could allocate most of our resources to the costuming which ended up being incredible. Um, but we have miles of this fabric and, mm -hmm. and we were coming up with interesting things to do with them and it was really during the improv games in February, March where we really started to utilize the fabric. I was rather intrigued by the silence and the time being our body image. Um, there is so much going on right now in um, helping people overcome self-concept issues or helping young children. Um, and if you've had a chance to read the Super Zeddy, then they, or I guess the, the Encore magazine, they had a few articles in this last one. Um, and Quietness uh, and silentness uh, is one of the techniques they use uh, to help people just uh, slow down a little bit and be a little more comfortable. And I was wondering if any of you had that in your background and she you know, did the work on this. I think it's definitely, we definitely had that moment, and even today, just getting all of the dancers ready and taking that time to realize, I mean, everyone has their insecurities, obviously. Everyone has their personal issues on body image and things like that, and especially in the mainstream media today. Um, and I would say that we had a lot of moments of comfortability and seeing how comfortable each dancer was in their own skin and in their own body, and even today of let's stop, let's pause, let's see how everybody looks without having all of their armor pieces on. And that was definitely, I think, I, if you guys would agree up until today, a, <laughs> <laughs> let's all be comfortable in our own skin and let's have this moment before we present it of kind of silence and getting ready and preparation in that that we dealt with. Yeah, I also think choreographically with a topic of this caliber, so such a heavy, 
problem or a phenomenon, you know, that's going on. Um, I'm almost very, I'm, no, I'm not almost, I'm for sure very happy that we decided, we went with silence because music can be very directorial, it can be very, it, it can be a dictatorship. The music can tell you how to feel about something, but if we don't, if we remove that, then it's up to you to sort of, and the dancers and the movement. I also think, sorry, um, <laughs> on, the, on the flip side of that a little bit, actually having had a lot of body image issues in middle school and, and being younger, there's this feeling that no one can hear you and they can only see you, and I felt that pretty powerfully when we developed this theme of body armor, um, that they're, they're being very clearly expressive, but no one can hear them, and that really, really spoke to me if, along with question for the dancers. Isabella, was it hard to join the other three who had had such a long period of concentrated time together underneath the fabric? Yeah, I found that very challenging. I had, but it was good because I had a lot of time to myself, like in isolation that I could just, um, you know, put myself in the zone. And Did you have your own piece of fabric back there? That you <laughs> 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 Not that Do that next time. Okay, just check. <laughs> yeah, but like coming in, you know, in rehearsals, I would often be like frantic, like trying to get to them. Like I would want to join in. It was hard for me to be isolated from them. But, you know, it was just like, okay, slow down. Like I know this is in silence. I know you're the only one moving on stage. But just like, you know, let it let it happen and um, take pauses and you know let yourself be curious about the group without trying to rush to them. So it was a challenge, but thank you. My question for the costume designer: uh, Did you have different inspirations for each of the different pieces of body armor? Um, I would say yes, yes. As a whole, um, we kind of went with the idea of. What does armor look like when it's not your traditional set in stone armor of a period? And um, playing off the idea of metal and leather and that type of a feel um, mixed in with couture-esque um, feminine sense. Um, I would say a lot of different things that I thought about were different body insecurities that people have. I mean, are you covering your stomach up? Are you covering your shoulders up? Where do people have those flaws? What part of your face are you hiding to different people, different aspects? Um, so I'd say a lot of, I and mean, the collaboration process of watching each dance and move, you learn a lot about them. You learn a lot about, you know, which poses they're more likely to go to, which areas they're more, li more likely to touch, and I kind of played off of that with choosing the pieces for each person. Anything else? I'd like to know a little bit more about the set, and that is that we didn't have a set design. Who placed them? Who made the decisions regarding the bad problem? That was, yeah, that was me. <laughs> um, we, we knew pretty quickly that we wanted to have a moving canopy in some way. Um, so that was a matter of coming in here with, with my mentor from the theater, Matt, and, and rigging these points so that they could move and look artistic. And I was actually shifting them until about an hour ago. <laughs> you know? um, and then this, this big imagery in the background I've, I've had in my brain for a while, it just it, I wanted to make something that was multi-dimensional using the same fabric and the same idea of exposing the ropes um, because, you know, there, there were question mark ways that let Evan like that and get a different look and feel from it, um, which was something that I really wanted to achieve for him to play with. Um, did you feel that you were um, expressing uh, experiences, or were you um, opening up experiences? Were you going through therapy with this piece? So, <laughs> what was your experience in being involved in the creative process, and then in your performance of it? So, if the dancers could talk about that, because you're living in the moment. I know that in the beginning, like, you know, we were sitting here for 20, 30 minutes just together, and we all were, I don't know, we were thinking together just, like, how soothing it was, and how, like, you know, the silence, and just, like, the slow rocking of it all, just, I don't know, it was like, even cleansing before we performed it, and then, speaking for myself, I know that, like, the, the solo moments, and 
taking um, what Brie gave me and all the, the signs we were using. Um, I think it was more of like a personal, like I was I was pulling on stuff that I've gone through. But going off of what Airji said, um, a few of the movements that we used was sign language. So depending on the sign that we were using kind of dictated what we were going through. Um, like this anxiety, acceptance, praise, um, focus, body, focus. Um, abuse. There were it, it really depended on um, not necessarily things that we have gone through, but um, we could feel that through. We know what it's like from other people, from stories that we have heard as dancers, so it was easier for us to portray certain things, and each of us were going through a different story as our solos progressed. Yeah, and like going off of that, it's definitely like, I know I was saying with Edgy, like I pulled from personal experiences, I mean everyone's self-conscious about something. Um, but at the same time, as much as it was individual and like going through something on your own and being able to accept who you really are, it was also like a group like acceptance. You know, throughout the whole thing, it's like, you yeah, I'm self-conscious, I'm self-conscious, but at the same time, we're all learning to accept ourselves as well as each other. And, and pushing same. ourselves to like yeah. that. And pushing each other to be like, it's okay, you know, you're beautiful no matter what, you know? <laughs> so it was more as much as it was individual, it was, it was a group acceptance. <laughs> I just want to thank you all for a very creative process, very successful outcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Well, that's all. Thank you guys so much for coming. And um, have a good uh, rest, after, rest of your afternoon. <laughs>